Glad to have you along with us here on ESPN2 with Tim Legler, CJ McCollum. I'm Mike Lees. We're just going to be watching the game. I I'm picking the Golden State Warriors to win it in an epic Game 7. Celtics have played in two Game 7s to get here. I think they win a third Game 7 in the finals, get their first championship. They've got three guys they drafted, two really good scores, and Marcus Smart is a defensive guy, and Ime Odoka is in his first year. But they're going on the road here, Tim, to try to tame one of the best teams of the generation. Yeah, this is an interesting contrast here because the Celtics have already won seven road games in three rounds. It's pretty <laughs> incredible, while the yeah. Golden State Warriors have not lost a, game, a home game in the playoffs. So something has to give here. The first game is always finding out how you got to play, right? It, it's like any first game of a series is really a fill-out situation. It's not going to hurt either team what happens in this first game. Five Magic Johnson is with us, and yeah, he knows a thing or two about winning championships with the Lakers, five of them in the 1980s. And one year after winning a national championship Michigan State as a rookie he finds himself in the NBA Finals game six on the road against the Sixers they don't have Kareem all he does is go for 42 and 15 becoming the only rookie all time to win finals MVP and and legs real quickly what was yeah. the question exactly you asked just, Magic? because we, we talk about it all the time like you know he even played center in that game and I'm thinking man I have a feeling he just viewed it as a great player needing to do more I don't know if you actually viewed yourself as a center that night I've always wanted you to, to ask you that no, you know, legs, hoopers just hoop. Wherever the coach was going to put me, I just went out there and hoop, man. I just played the game. And like you said, I just knew I had to score because Kareem had been averaging about 30 in that series. So we're missing 30 points and we're missing about also 15 or 18 rebounds a game. So I had to make up a lot for what he brought to the table and give Jamal Wilkes a lot of credit, too, because he scored 37 points in that game. Everybody forgets about that. So we both did what we had to do to, to win. CJ, what are you going to do with Zion this summer? Because that's going to be a key to you guys really going deep into the playoff. What are you going to do with him? Yeah, I took him under my arms. I got him. I'm going to make sure he's okay. right. We've been communicating this summer about times we're going to meet up and link. I'm going to get him out here to Good. New York. Get some working with me during draft week. He, if he's not watching this, he's going to see this clip. I'm getting him out to Vegas with me. <laughs> We're going to get some time together. I told him. I work out at 6, 6.30. You know, my, my yep. son be up early. So I work yep. out 6, 6.37. Get this work in, then I'll be here on set with y'all. I, I need some I need some pointers on how to run the show, too. Got to make sure Big what? Fella's happy. I got to feed B.I. I, I got <laughs> to make sure J.V. is getting what he needs to get. I got to take it to the next level. I know you're going to help me get there. Uh, you got it. I got you on that. I got you on that. Steph Curry has 21 oh points here in the first quarter. Again, he's never had a finals MVP in the three titles they've won. You can see, he is hyped for this game. And CJ, you said he may go for 40 tonight. Man, he's, he's going, more than halfway oh, there already. He's going for 40 tonight. This is personal. People talk about he hasn't won an MVP. Is he this? Is he that? I think he's solidifying his greatness. Here's the thing. Steph Curry has it on his mind right now to try to win him a finals MVP. He came out in that first quarter and they, he was on their behind like back pockets. I think Jason Tatum has arrived as one of the elite scorers in the game today with zero flaws. But when he's playing with force and attacking downhill, he's hard to deal with. Frank, I wonder what Stephen A. Smith would say about Steph Curry's hot start to this game. Well, whatever I'm going to say, I'm going to say it loudly. That's the point it's going to make. I don't even need a microphone. That's what Stephen A is all about. And the A is for astronomical, and that's where my <laughs> voice is right now for everybody in the audio section. That's a very good setup by you, Legs. That's a, guy who shoots and that's a guy who shoots and doesn't know how to pass. That's what that all is. <laughs> you're watching everything he says. Legs on the side, CJ talking about. You know it's gonna happen. You know when it is done. Not that. It's gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be early. Gonna... That's exactly what I thought, Shaq. Pretty good. But let's figure it out in the next section. That's gonna be very, very good. <laughs> well, John C. Riley, who's got that great voice and somewhere in the middle of his throat, he can't fight his way out. Just keep watching <laughs> the winter time, waiting for. You, you, my name's Jerry, but you have to call me Dragon Bucks. Huh? How's that? That's what you do. Did you touch my legacy? Red, did you touch my legacy? Uh, who else? Oh, and Morgan, Fre Morgan Freeman, let's see, uh, maybe narrating uh, Steph Curry's mouthpiece. That mouthpiece that traveled through 500 miles with the filthiest slop I can't even imagine. Or maybe I just don't want it. <laughs> if we go back to last year, Spike, I'm not sure all our fans realize that you produced the video opens 
for the NBA Finals. The issue was we only had six games instead of seven, and there was one that never got to air, but you put all that together, man. What was that like for you to be able to put that video? Because I know you're such a hoop head at heart. Well, it was, I was like surprised when the NBA when the NBA asked me to do the series, the openings for all the games, and uh, series ended in six, and game seven was my favorite one because May eighth, nineteen seventy, Madison Square Garden. I was there. Ooh, 13 okay. years old. I was there. Oh. Game seven. I was there. All right. Well, speaking of that, we have that never before seen footage, what the open would have been for game seven last year. Let's check it out. Thank you this year, too. <laughs> OMG! Game seven! Action! It is game seven. The starting game seven of the world. I think we see Willis well coming out. May 8th. 1970, I was at the garden for that glorious, magical night. Me, 13 years old, a Brooklyn kid, witnessed history. It's the last game of the year. The last two teams standing, write everything out there. You can either let somebody write your story or you write your own story. I ain't let nobody write my story. Sure, we never played. But we were all in that game. Every possession, every call. Test, that's a three. Every chant of defense. Oh, every, every, every. The streamers are coming down from up above. The from the blue seats. This place is going nuts. To the ticket tape away. We're all in this game together. This is a game seven in the NBA Finals. One game on our home floor to bring home another championship, man. Here at the NBA Finals. Are you kidding me? What a ball game. The dream season is now complete. Game seven. You dig? Show up. Nothing like a game seven, nothing like one in the NBA Finals. But, Spike, the question is, are we going to have a game seven in these NBA Finals? Well, I think it's going to be uh, close. You know, I don't like no team from Boston. <laughs> no, I'm from New York, and it's vice versa. But I got to respect the, the Celtics. They're, they're doing the, the damn thing. They got a great team, man. It's, I think it's going to be, it could go seven. It could go seven. BJ, one, we appreciate the time. And when, when people talk about dynasties and they always talk about the Bulls and that run, what memories come to your mind? Well, just being able to persevere and do whatever is necessary to figure out how to win games once you get to the court. You know, you talk about a dynasty, you talk about great players, great talent, great teams. But in the end, it's about the everyday grind and figuring out a way how to win that particular game in any given night. It's an 82-game schedule. Of course, every team faces obstacles, you know, highs and lows of the season. But when you talk about a dynasty, you just figure it out as you go along. And, you know, certainly I was able to play on some really great teams and play against some great teams. So it's just a, it's just a pleasure and an honor to play in the NBA. And then when you see great teams like you're currently seeing here with the Golden State, who's making a tremendous run, it's because they just find a way. You know, you know, I wish there was a formula. I would bottle it up and sell it. But you just do it. You know, you just figure it out how to play and win as you go along. Hey, BJ, I, I, my whole career was basically the decade of the 90s, and the, that franchise you just mentioned won six championships, so I viewed you guys as selfish, if you want to know the truth. I apologize, I, think it's I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking about this run that the Warriors have made, six finals now in eight years. Again, you were there for the start of it. What do you attribute mostly to the success? It's one thing to have great players, but the success overall... Where did it come from, you believe? Well, it definitely takes talent. Um, it started before I got here. Um, but if I had to sum it up, culture. Uh, that's, that's really, you know, with any great organization, any great team, um, you know, it starts in the locker room, starts with the best players, uh, the head coach, um, of course, ownership, and, and all the way down. And, uh, but, you know, it, to me, it starts with Steph Curry, and it permeates throughout the, the rest of the organization. It, it just starts with playing to win. And from there, uh, building a level of resiliency. I think 
you look at our stories, I mean, you know, Steph started out, um, you know, wasn't highly recruited, um, you know, out of high school. Draymond Green, second round pick, Clay Thompson, you know. I think uh, I was, you know, me and Bogues at the time, uh, Andrew Bogut were the highest draft picks. Um, and we were role players, right? And so I think you look at the story, all of us, uh, we had to fight through things. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it, it's in the character and the resilience of the team. I definitely think you have to look at execution in the fourth quarter. You got to look at the offense. They played a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. That's not Warrior basketball. It's more movement-based, play through the pinch post. They looked flustered. They looked rushed. They didn't look like a championship caliber team that fourth quarter. Throughout the rest of the game, they did. They got whatever they wanted. But that fourth quarter, Boston imposed their will and showed why they're the best defensive team in the NBA. So final score, 120-108. In the fourth quarter, it was 40-16. to 16. Again, the Celtics were up two at the half. They got blitzed in the third quarter by 14, so they're down 12 going to the fourth, and they ended the game on a 20-5 to five run. Whether, whether even if you pick the Celtics to win a series, anybody to believe in that, like this, this is one of the most shocking turnarounds you're going to see.